Did you just get Windows 11 and you're worried because everyone says it sucks? If so, today I'm gonna to show you how to make it better. And regardless of the comments below, it's not gonna be by installing Windows 10. <laughs> Stay tuned. So, you just got a new computer with Windows 11, or you upgraded an old system. What should you do now? Today, I'll show you how to make your Windows 11 experience a little bit more bearable, and we're going to do it without any third-party software at all. In reality, Windows 11 is a lot better now than it was when it was first released. Also, if you watched my video a few weeks ago, the next update to Windows 11 looks pretty good. Either way, there's coming a time when we're all going to have to upgrade to Windows 11. Unless, of course, Windows 12 comes out and it turns out being way better than Windows 11. But we'll just have to wait and see on that. So when that time comes, it'll be nice to know a quick and easy way to make Windows 11 more usable. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, we got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So with that said, let's jump on the computer here and I'll show you how to make Windows 11 better. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11, and for the first step, it's obviously to get rid of some of this garbage that Microsoft includes with their Windows 11 installs. Now, I did a video a while back where I show how to install Windows 11 without all this junk on it right from the factory, and you can follow that video if you want, but if you didn't, then you can always go through, and whenever you see any of this bloatware on here, like Disney Plus and stuff like that, just click uninstall, and you can go through and uninstall all of these programs just like that, and essentially all you do is just continue to repeat this until you get all of the apps out that you don't want. And for the most part, it is pretty simple. You just go through, right click and hit uninstall, and you can get rid of all of these programs right here. And essentially just continue to repeat that until all the programs are gone that you don't want on the system. Now, you can also go into all apps right here, and you can go down the list this way to remove them that way as well. However, it's nice that they are fairly easy to remove. Now, like I said, you can check out a video that I did a few weeks ago that shows how to install Windows 10 without all this crap on it in the first place. And that's a really good video to follow, and it's really simple to follow too. So if you're setting Windows 11 up for the first time, then I highly recommend watching that video so you can skip this step right here. But if you didn't, it's not really that hard of a step. So you can do it this way as well. So the next thing I recommend doing, and this one here is more of a personal preference thing, but it's something that you can definitely make use of, is disabling notifications. Now, I like to disable all notifications. Let me show you how to do it, and you can disable the ones that you don't want. So you click on the Start button, go ahead and click on Settings, and then from the Settings menu right here, you wanna go into System, and then you wanna go into Notifications right here. And there's two different sections that you wanna look at. First off, you wanna go right here to where it says notifications, and if you click on this, it'll drop down and it'll give you all the different kinds of notifications, like allow notifications to play sounds, show no notifications on the lock screen, and show reminders and incoming VOP calls. You can uncheck all these if you want, or you can just flip the entire thing off altogether. But you can also scroll all the way down to the bottom here, and if you see where it says additional settings, these are the ones right here that are, I think, are the most important to turn off. And one of them is get tips and suggestions when using Windows, I would turn that off, suggest ways to get the most of the Windows and finish setting up this device. Now, this one right here is an important one, this middle one right here. If you notice that every once in a while when you go to start up Windows, it wants you to finish setting up your device and create a Microsoft account. Well, this is what's causing that right there. So if you uncheck this, it won't bug you anymore. So I typically uncheck all three of these. You can also alternatively go through and you can disable notifications for specific programs if you wanted to. Or if you wanna skip all that, you can just come up here, turn it all off and then be free of notifications altogether. 
Now, the notification subsystem inside of Windows 11 is just annoying. And it's one of those situations to where the vast majority of notifications that I get, in fact, I can't even recall if there's a notification that I've gotten that was useful in the first place. So I always turn all of my notifications off. But primarily, that one setting down at the bottom where it says finish setting up this device, that's the one that I highly recommend turning off. Because if you set up your computer without a Microsoft account and you don't turn that off, it's gonna bug you to create a Microsoft account probably every three or four days you turn your computer on. And to be honest with you, it's really aggravating. So let's get back to it. Okay, so the next one we're gonna look at right here, we're gonna go ahead and close settings. And the next one we're gonna look at right here is when it comes to all the different things that you have on your taskbar right here. Now this one right here is, is a somewhat stock taskbar. It's gonna look similar to this when you start using your system. So if you wanna modify the configuration of this taskbar, all you do is you right click and go to taskbar settings. Now the first thing that I typically do on my own computers is turn all four of these top ones off. You turn off chat, widgets, and taskbar. That's gonna get rid of most of the junk that Microsoft has running on the taskbar. You can also turn off the search box by going here and just going hide. And that'll get rid of the search box altogether. Now, if you're like a lot of Windows users and you don't like the center start button like this, then what you can do is go into taskbar behaviors and then right here where it says taskbar alignment instead of center, just go left and it'll throw your start menu over to the left like it's been in traditional versions of Windows in the past. Now, these settings right here, you've probably seen a hundred times before. These are the ones that most people cover when they show you how to set up a Windows 11 system. However, we still gotta include them because it's part of setting up a Windows 11 system. So let's get back to it and I'll show you the next one. Now, the next one I recommend is kind of tweaking your power settings a little bit. In order to do that, go to back over to the system tab. And then from the system tab, you wanna go down into the power tab right here. And then from the power tab, as you can see, my power mode is currently set to balanced. What I recommend doing is changing the power mode to best performance. Also, while you're in this section right here, you can also click on the screen and sleep settings right here. And see, on mine, I have mine set to never. And the reason being is because I'm using this system to record videos. So what I don't want it to do is go to sleep while I'm filming before I go to screen capture. So anyway, out of necessity for the way I use my system, I turn these to never all the time. However, you can set these to anything you want. You can make your system so it doesn't go to sleep for five hours if you wanted to, or you can make it so it never goes to sleep at all. And you can also change how the screen itself turns on or off. So depending on your use case, you can change these accordingly. So in regards to power mode, I've had a lot of people claim that if you change your system from a balanced power mode to a high performance power mode, that it's somehow going to stop your CPU from throttling. And it's gonna run it at top speed all the time. And unfortunately, that's simply not true. Your CPU is still designed to have a variable clock speed. And that variable clock speed is still going to function even in the high performance power mode. So. If you're worried about your CPU not lasting as long by changing it to high performance, don't worry about it. It's gonna be just fine. Let's move on. Okay, so the next section we wanna look at is we're gonna stay in settings here, but now we're gonna go down to apps and we're gonna go down to default apps. Now, right here, I'm gonna show you how to manually change your default browser. And to do this, essentially what you need to do is scroll down to your browser. This is a lot different than previous versions of Windows, and it's still a major complaint that I have with Windows 11. It shouldn't be this difficult. But in this case, I'm gonna use Chrome as my default browser. So if I click on Chrome, as you can see at the top, they did include this in Windows 11. They actually have a button now that just says set to default. However, when you do that, as you notice, it only changes your default browser. It doesn't change like, for instance, your PDF reader or all these other functions down here are still opening within Microsoft Edge. So if you wanna change different aspects of your defaults within Chrome, like for instance, say I wanna open PDFs in Chrome and not Edge. Well, what you would do is just go down to the PDF file extension, click here, and then select what the app is that you want to set for your default in regards to Chrome itself. Now, this one here is a massive pet peeve of mine, and I really wish Microsoft would change this, but I don't see that happening. Essentially, what they've done is they've made default apps or setting default apps more complicated intentionally just so you'll use Microsoft apps instead of other third-party apps. At least that's the only explanation I have with that. I think they should change it back to one of the systems we had before to make it much easier to change our defaults. But it is what it is.
Okay, so the next setting we're going to look at is we're going to have to go down to the account setting right here. And then from accounts, we want to go to, into sign in options right here. And then from sign in options, you'll notice that right here it says automatically save my restartable apps and restart them when I sign back in. I highly recommend turning this off. Essentially, what this does is it restarts apps that were running when you shut your system down. Kind of similar to the way that Apple does it. I turn this off just to make my boot ups a little bit faster. And most of the time, I don't want those apps to open up again. I turn the computer off because I don't want to use it anymore. And I'd rather not have those apps start back up unless I click on the icon to start the app up. The next setting we're going to change is virtualization based security. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and close settings. We're going to click on our start menu and we're going to search for core isolation. And once it comes up, you just click on it right here and it should order open this up. Now, as you can see, mine is already turned off. And the reason mine is turned off is because I have an incompatibility with memory integrity. So if I try to turn this off, you'll see if I hit yes here, you'll see that I have a driver that's incompatible. But by default, this is typically turned on. And when this is turned on, I recommend turning it off, especially if you're running a lot of games, because this is known to slow down gaming performance on a Windows 11 system. So in my case, I can't even turn on the memory integrity of core isolation because I have an incompatible driver. And the driver is actually from a Logitech webcam that I have hidden behind my monitor that I essentially just use as a microphone while I'm screen recording to make it a little bit easier to synchronize my audio when I go to edit this video. However, in your case, if you do have core isolation turned on, if you turn it off, you can help to improve your gaming performance a little bit. So if you're playing a lot of games, that's a good setting to turn off to give yourself a little bit more performance. However, if you're not really playing any games, then it might be a good security feature to keep turned on. You know, it's up to you. I turn it off on mine because, well, I play a lot of games. Let's get back to it. Okay, speaking of gaming, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this. We're going to go back into settings. And then once we launch settings here, we're going to go to gaming. And then from gaming, we're going to go on game mode. Now you would think, well, of course, we want to leave game mode on, right? No, we really don't. We want to flip this off. Game mode is known to cause slowdowns in gaming. So this is a good one to turn off. And while you're in the gaming section, it might be a good idea to go into the Xbox game bar and turn that off as well. And then since you're here, you can go and turn captures off too. Because what this does is it essentially automatically captures screen recordings while you're playing games. Well, what if you don't want to waste the CPU cycles to do that? So you can go ahead and turn that off also and you can kind of help speed your games up a little bit. So the next setting that I want to talk about isn't really a setting, but if you bought your computer new, especially if you bought it at a big box store, it probably came with a third party antivirus installed on it. This could be Norton or McAfee or any numerous other third party antivirus that happens to pay the big box store the most amount of commission to install it on your computer. Well, typically all third party antiviruses are normally not necessary, especially in Windows 11, you know, actually all the way back since Windows 7, you could run Microsoft Security Essentials, which today is simply known as Windows Security. Now, this comes built in with Windows 11 and for the most part is probably good enough for the vast majority of people on a Windows system. So my next recommendation is to uninstall any third party antivirus that you have on your system and just use the one that came with Windows 11. Works pretty good. Okay, so for the next tip, we're going to go ahead and close this right here. And this tip, I think, is probably one of the most important things to do on a Windows 11 system. And that is turning off this stupid context menu. If you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you know that I absolutely despise this menu right here. And luckily, it's really easy to turn off. Let me show you how to do it. So go ahead and click the Start button. And from there, just type RegEdit. And then once your registry editor opens, you want to go to current user. And this is going to be a setting you're going to have to change for each user. So it's kind of a drag. You can't do it system wide. However, I'll at least show you how to do it this way. And then you can copy it for other users. And then from there, you want to go into software and then go into classes. And then from classes, you want to scroll all the way down until you find CLS ID. And it's essentially going to be alphabetical. So we want to go all the way down to the C's. And then once we find it, CLS ID right here. And as you can see, you got a couple of settings in here. So what we want to do is we want to create a new key. 
So from here, we're going to create a new key, and that key is going to be named this long string of characters that I just happen to have in my clipboard. And then once you do that, and I'll go ahead and leave this string of characters in the description below, so you can just copy it there. And then from here, you want to create another key, and this key is going to be another thing I have stored in my clipboard. And this one's Impro Server 32, and you want to make sure to spell that correctly, but again, I'll go ahead and have this down in the settings below. Now, the last thing you want to do is right here where it says default. Now, this is the thing that a lot of people forget about, and this is really important. Right here where it says default, you'll see that it says value not set. However, that's not good enough. You want to open it, make sure there's nothing in this box, and then hit OK. And as you can see, the data is now nothing. It doesn't say value not set. So at this point, you can go ahead and close your registry editor. And in some cases, you right click and you'll just it'll be disabled, but in this case it wasn't. So what we're going to do is right click on the taskbar, we're going to go into task manager, and then from task manager we want to scroll down until task manager crashes. Okay, let's try to do this again and see if we can get this to actually work. All right. And no, we can't. Okay, for some reason, Task Manager keeps crashing on me, and I don't know why. Another fun bug with Windows 11, obviously. So, I'm gonna scroll down, and nope, not lucky, lucky enough. It looks like it might crash again. Well, maybe not, okay. I'm gonna scroll up this time, and essentially we're looking for Windows Explorer. There we go. We're gonna restart task, and then from this point, we should have the old fashioned context menu. And if you go into any folder or whatnot, like for instance, let's go into our pictures folder and you right click on a file, you have the old fashioned context menu there. Okay, Microsoft, I don't know what the deal with Task Manager was right there, but that was a bug that didn't happen when I was testing for this video. But of course it happens while I'm filming. That's just the way it goes with Windows 11 sometimes. Now, this is just a surface level improvement to Windows 11. We really haven't done anything other than change some settings to make the system a little bit less bloated and a little bit more responsive. Unfortunately, not less buggy, obviously. <laughs> there are, however, many more things that you can do to make Windows 11 a much more bearable operating system. Some of the other things that I didn't include would be staying up to date on Windows updates. <laughs> Believe it or not, Windows 11 seems to be getting better as more updates come out. So I would make sure to upgrade Windows 11 often, especially when 23H2 comes out. I'm really looking forward to that update. And Hopefully bugs like the task manager not working there for a little while would have been fixed as well. But if you just can't handle the look of Windows 11, but you have no other choice than to run it, I've done an entire series on how to make Windows 11 look like several other previous Windows operating systems. And you can check out that playlist here. You can make Windows 11 look like anything from Windows 98 all the way to Windows 10. Now, I haven't done one yet for Windows 3.1, yet I'm seriously considering it. As always, you guys have a great day.